Today's December 25th. It's Christmas Day here in the States, and you're listening to Human Factors Cast, episode 71. Today on the show, we're going to go through the rest of the stories we talked about this year in the context of the entire year and make our predictions for 2018. Human Factors Cast starts right now. to Human Factors Cast, your weekly podcast for all things human factors, psychology, and design. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Human Factors Cast. I'm your host, Nick Rome, joined today by Mr. Blake Arnsdorf. Oh, Nick, man, happy holidays, and I hope you're having a wonderful Christmas, as well as everybody out there that's listening to Human Factors Cast on this wonderful wintry day it is a wonderful wintry day it is christmas uh we are here in the studio we are recording on christmas day just kidding uh we are actually just picking up last (laughs) from where we left off last week uh and so it will be we (laughs) will be three weeks removed from actually getting any listener feedback or anything so i'm a little worried we're getting a little far in the future but it's okay because at least our listeners have content to cozy up next to the fire and listen to all the news stories of 2017 to remember how awesome of a year it was for the field of human factors all right blake shall i start us off with picking up from where we left off uh last time let's do it man all right so we had twitter no longer counting at names in replies as part of its 140 character limit and then later on we actually saw them increase that limit to what 280 is that what it is now yeah 280 i don't know what they're trying to do if like it's driving engagement or what it is but you know i think a lot of people seem to have liked it no idea facebook opening live 360 live streaming to everyone pedestrian deaths spiked last year due to increased distractions that's not a surprise kidding because of pokemon go and things like that Uh, All these augmented reality distracting apps that keep people out of the loop of their everyday uh, interactions. Let's see here. We had April full. Oh, my God. We're only in April. Although, to be honest, we did kind of cut down the amount of stories every week, so we'll be okay. Uh, April Fool's 2017. Here's the best and worst of this year's pranks so far. Uh, So that's a whole thing. (laughs) That's a whole deal. That's a whole deal. Uh, Daimler and Bosch had uh, claimed fully autonomous cars within five years. Ah, two. Two years. Two years. Was it five? Is it two? No, no, no. It says five years. I'm saying it's going to be two. (laughs) Oh, you're saying it's going to be two. All right. Well, Mercedes promises self-driving taxis in just three years. So there's that. Hey. Driverless pods begin ferrying the public around Greenwich. So we actually saw some of these autonomous vehicles start to take hold and actually cart people around. Ooh, now Nick is... Oh, it's not flying, so no points for you. Thank goodness. No flying, so I get no points. Uh, Ways traffic data could help with emergency services saving lives. That's an interesting uh, development. I think it's always good when data goes towards saving lives. I I love it. Disney could go full Westworld with the new patent filing for soft humanoid robots. This obviously has a lot of other applications, but... Uh, Disney, man, they they were just on it for research this year. Yeah, they seriously were, and that's kind of a scary concept, right? It is. We had a uh, high school junior launches Tagdat, uh, an emoji-based local reviews app where you just basically review with emoji. And Which was so sick that it was a high schooler that developed the whole thing or released it. It was just an awesome thing to see. That is awesome. All right, so we had Google Tool helping developers pick the right colors for their apps, which is great. Inside the next, oh yeah, Project Scorpio or Xbox One X was announced. We had aircraft design that'll make you love the middle seat. I loved this one. This one, I don't know if this is top five either. Yeah, I don't know. It was really good. I, it's it, until I experience it, I'm not stoked on it. Yeah. All right. Netflix overly simplified. Oh yeah. Then the thumb ratings actually came out. Yep, they did, and there was (laughs) haterade to be sipped by all. There was. All right, so I I like them. Whatever. (laughs) Whatever, Blake. Uh, (laughs) NBC ordered a primetime show about advances in science and technology. I think that was with Chris Hardwick and hasn't aired yet. I was about to say, what happened to that? But cool. 
Unpaywall scours the web for free versions of scientific papers. That's another tool to remind you guys to go check out Unpaywall. FDA allows marketing of first direct uh, to consumer tests that provide genetic risk information for certain conditions. So awesome. I'm just, I don't know. I'm super stoked to see that. There's a lot of health stuff this year, too, which is always good. Fitness tracker clues women into life threatening condition. That's with her Fitbit, right? It is able to. Yeah, th- I think this is actually the first of those stories, too. Yeah, it was. It's a tricorder like device, can tell if your brain is bleeding. We had all these medical advancements. ODG unveils enterprise focus AR smart glasses optimized for hazardous locations. Again, another one of those examples of AR being used in not game applications. Yeah, we saw a lot of AR being incorporated into like goggle systems that are used in environments like that. Like we had a bunch of Hololens stories in the past few months. Uh, but that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, Air Force. Oh wait, algorithms can exploit human perception and graph design. That was basically using other algorithms to generate scatter plots. Air Force is testing air-to-ground strikes with autonomous F-16 wingmen. The, uh, Which is, like, nuts, right? That yeah. They're, like, having so many problems with the F-35, but they've got, like, an autonomous version of the F-16 to roll around. Yeah, no kidding. We had a vibrating smart bra. Keeps tabs on how zen you feel. That might have been my favorite title you came up with. It's like, what was it, like, Nick and Blake mansplaining the... The bra. The bra or something. I I laugh every time I see that. Yeah. Oh, well, we changed our naming convention because of a listener feed constructive criticism. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. We had uh, Toyota's new robot leg brace can help those with partial paralysis walk again. That's another theme for the year. We saw a lot of like exoskeleton type stuff. Yeah, we did. We did. All right. Things to look out for in 2018. I'm I'm getting one, I'm telling you. 2018's my year. <laughs> All right. Cadillac's answer to self-driving puzzles. Shoving a camera in your face. Uh, GM plans to deploy hundreds of autonomous vehicles across the country for testing. Well, that's yet to be seen. Yet to be seen. It's it's didn't say by the end of this year. It's it's <laughs> almost 2018. What are you guys doing over there? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, AI can predict heart attacks more accurately than doctors. We saw this a little earlier. Researchers, we've seen this a couple times yeah. now too. Like that with AI or at least like data-driven systems being able to pre- predict like if you're going to have a heart attack or any of that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, where are we? Researchers sim- simulate walls in VR by shocking your muscles. We've seen a couple of these technologies too, which I'm sure we'll yeah. revisit later. Yeah, this this kind of gets into the the realm of making VR that much more immersive with haptic feedback, and then in this case, like really making you feel like you're in a room. Yeah, smart bandages using 5G data to track your health. MIT only needing a second to teach you a new language. That's that that app where you basically log in and learn a word right yeah it's like one second every time you log in yeah facebook launching a beta of spaces it's goofy and fun social vr platform uh facebook also announced that they were building a bci brain computer interface amazon so many things from facebook holy cow facebook amazon google apple i feel like those are obviously the big ones but there's a lot of stories in here by them and they are obviously leading the charge on this, but we also have, you know, a representation from the smaller startups as well. So I, I feel like we have a good spread. Oh well, yeah. These companies end up buying those startups in the long run anyway. So it's, it's definitely a good spread. We've got Amazon Lex opened up to developers, MasterCard trials, biometric bank card with embedded finger net, fingerprint reader. Awesome idea and conception. I don't know about the application though. Uh, 25 is golden age for the ability to make random choices. I'm just not as random as I used to be. Uh, bias bots. Human prejudices sneak into artificial intelligence systems. And we've seen that a couple times. <laughs> yeah. We've seen it in the worst possible ways. Yeah. Yeah. Google Home can now recognize up to six voices and give personalized responses. So we saw on last week's episode that, uh, well, I guess... You know, just shortly after Amazon announced those uh, two, the the profiles, then Google wanted in on that game too. Um, we had Eerie Tech promising to copy anyone's voice from just one minute of audio, and I remember that one vividly. I think that one might be one of my top five as well. 
Because yeah, that was pretty nuts. Because wasn't the like example they gave Trump? I think so. They did Trump, Barack Obama, Hillary. They did all the political figures. Yikes! Yeah, but, it wasn't like it wasn't spot on one hundred percent, but it was enough no. that it's like uh, that's that's pretty accurate. It was exactly enough, and that combined with the one story that we'll talk a little bit about later, how the uh, how they can basically create fake image or, or fake video from an yeah, audio sample to go along with it. That's yeah, right. That's that's the deadly combination to me. We had uh, Google tweaking search options to help combat fake news. So this whole year was fake news, fake news, fake news. All right, Blake, you want to take over the next one? Let's do it. All right, so Face App apologizes for building. Oh, yeah, we talked about this. We just a talked ra- about it. Racist AI. Here it is. There's the first one. Don't worry. There's more. Stay tuned. Uh, so, <laughs> so another awesome DARPA project. I wonder where this is. They want to hack your brain so you can make you learn faster. I feel like DARPA and Elon Musk would get along really well, except for one's really afraid of AI. Uh, <laughs> so drunk man may have started a robot uprising. This is... This, this was the security the guy, bot. Like, attacked the security bot, right? Yeah, the one that I posted on my Twitter that we talked yes. about two weeks ago. He just destroyed it. Oh, man. More of those to come, I promise. So, movie research. So, multitasking overloads the brain. The brain works most efficiently when it can focus on a single task for longer periods of time. That's a an interesting one, and it was a cool uh, intersection with cinematography. Uh, some of our, our beloved MIT research. So wireless walking speed measurement is more accurate than a Fitbit. Oh, shoot. I wonder if we're going to see some kind of projects coming out from MIT that are going to compete with Fitbit-like devices. I don't know. That'd be interesting oh, for here, sure. Here's another one to look out for in 2018 is the Boring Company. Oh, so, yeah, that's right. That was uh, this year. That's crazy to think that it was just this year that he announced that. Well, that was early in the year, too, which yeah. I think is probably playing into that. But, yeah, so we're going to try and move cars faster under the radar. So Apple, Tesla wants whoa, Apple Tesla wants changes to California's self-driving car tests. Hmm. Not really sure, but I'm assuming this is this has something to do with just developing autonomous cars, and they yeah, want to make sure. So. It's that whole butting heads with legislation. that. Yeah, yeah this, this might have been one of the first fights we were seeing against it. Like trying to put in the regulations to make sure that people are held accountable and the AI is good enough and yada yada. Uh, okay, so Astrobe, the little adorable little robot that'll soon jet around the ISS. So this oh, was yeah. in the space station, right? Yeah. Incredible. I think he's actually up there now. Well, we should say hi. Hello, Astrobe. <laughs> Coming at you live, Immune Factors cast. Uh, so, Vo Robotics gives industrial robots a sixth sense for safely working with working around people. Oh yeah, this was the one where like the robot arm is like slinging a uh, slinging a refrigerator type unit around and stops when a human yeah. walks in. Awesome yeah, that's tech. right. That was co- cool. Uh, so, AI can recognize musical genres better than humans. Um. Nick, can I? I'm just going to say this. I don't know what utility that brings. Yeah, I think a categorization tool. Yeah. Okay. We yeah, like I mean, to put things looking in the at the buckets. application and not the larger implication. Yeah. Anyway, okay. So Amazon's latest Alexa feature. So many Alexa features in one year. I know. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it makes it sound more human than ever. Is that true? I don't know. Do you know. think she sounds more I human now? Can't tell a difference, honestly. It'd be interesting to see the side by side, but I, I honestly, just from anecdotal evidence, I can't tell a difference. Gotcha. All right. Well, I can tell you, Siri's gotten a lot more snarky, or with me at least. Uh, That's because it's but you. Anyhow, yeah, yeah it's because it is me. Uh, all right. So, oh, this was kind of an interesting one. This is really like in our psychological roots, but language shapes how the brain perceives time. So it's kind of like a framing effect if you think about like, uh, what is it, Kahneman, Tversky type writings. Right. But still cool to talk about. All right. So scientists are taking to Twitter to study how people, how the power of visual abstract graphics, so the number of people clicking on to read research papers is tripled by using these kind of visual graphics to. I guess grab people's attention, and I think that could be abstracted to just what people click on in general. Because I know there's been like there was just including pictures in your Twitter posts and gifts, all that kind of stuff. Right, so, right, yeah. Being able to get more engagement, driving engagement through imagery. All right, so Nissan's Faraday cage armrest is the 
abstinence of mobile driving distraction. This was a really cool one where you basically put your phone in the center console and then it just... The I, car I wouldn't start it, up unless you put it in there. Yeah, yeah, then can't touch it. Good stuff. Um, so new... All right, here. New technique turns anything into a touch sensor. I remember watching the video for this thing, if there was one. Yeah, uh, it was the table, right? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. That I feel like that might have been an MIT spoof, or it could it was, have come you it was know, from IEEE. that IEEE conference. It was IEEE for sure. Yikes. All right, so $130 million, uh, at risk after massive leak of Indian biometric system data. So, oh, yeah, this was happening across the world, not really yeah. just localized to us here in the states okay so google doc scam is spreading fast and will email everyone you know i'm so glad that this didn't happen to me Cybersecurity. <laughs> yep Cybersecurity once again and and to one of the bigger names too it's kind yeah of no kidding all right so neural network learns to reproduce what your brain sees Oh, man, that's kind of scary. Uh, so blind runners are finding their own way thanks to a, thanks to new sonic tech. So I think this is kind of along the lines of the app we were talking about. Uh, With the vibrating. Like, yeah. It, vibrating it's a little practices. different. These are these are directed sound waves that when you're on a on a racetrack, you can not you, you can hear it from either side. So, you know, if you're hitting a line. Ah, that's slightly that's different cool stuff. Light years ahead of me. All right, so personality factors are the best defense against losing your job to a robot. Personality traits, interests in arts and science, predict better job outcomes. So basically be an interesting person and you won't lose your job to a robot is what they're telling us. All right, so computer-generated doctor explains test results to patients. Ooh, that's kind of a crazy one. Oh, yeah, uh, I remember that one. Yeah, computers getting in the way of doctors. Uh, so study <laughs> VR twice as effective as morphine at treating pain. Wow, we saw that twice in one year. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, use of VR instead of sedatives. I love it. Uh, so Kai 2017, interesting interfaces. They were interesting, and I'm sure we said those exact there's, words. Yeah, there's a list of them. This one and the next Kai one is are both uh, lists. Ah, I got you. So we just broke down the 2017 v virtual reality and interesting interfaces. Uh, all right. So one industry expert shows just how badly you suck at online security. Very Again, biased. playing into that cybersecurity yeah. theme. I, I love it. I kind of want to, I need to revisit that one because I'm worried about my own safety. All right. So, oh, yeah. Here we go. So latest PLA safety campaign targets human error. Hellenic shipping news worldwide. I do not remember what this one was about. Do you, Nick? This one was, uh, I don't, but I think this was literally a human factors anagram for safety. Sounds right to me, my man. Yeah, I, don't, I, I couldn't tell you. Again, we're <laughs> just kind of looking at these at a glance. So Yeah, we'll escape. So a sensor that could soon make homes scary smart. Huh, that's definitely in our future. I should have put that in my predictions, but I'm looking out for like the Internet of Things in the home for sure. Yeah. Uh, I think that's going to be a big deal. All right, so Apple's watch can detect an abnormal heart heart ugh, excuse me heart rhythm with 97% accuracy. Ah, so cool. We talked about so this. So cool. Yeah, we, all of these really coming together. I know. Yeah, it's it's interesting when you look back at the year and kind of see the themes that are coming out of it. Oh, yeah, look, a bunch of people are doing this. Yeah, yeah, it just keeps kind of growing in those similar trends. The only one that we're having a problem with, which maybe is a good thing to talk about as we went back, is like cybersecurity really needs a lot of help. It does, for sure. Yeah, all right. So safety benefits of highway infrastructure investments. I'm wondering kind of what this was about, if it was revamping roads or preparing for, you know, the introduction of smart cities into different uh, different cultures. I think I'm was, not sure. I think it was just like street signs and, and that kind of thing. Gotcha. All right. So new Google Maps update makes it even harder to get lost. I'm going to say that's not true. <laughs> I, I still get lost. I don't remember what the update was. Uh, it was called the Blake Still Gets Lost update. Ah, okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't even. <laughs> I don't know either. I didn't really notice any kind of change. Yeah. Um, oh man, <laughs> want to cry update. So Microsoft pushes an update that just made you want to cry. Uh, definitely remember that because I, I was luckily 
perusing the internet when it came out and did not update because I think it made a lot of people like lose data or they couldn't use Windows 10 correctly, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, it was I don't know. something really major. Yeah, it was It was not a fun time for anybody on a Microsoft machine. But anyhow. That's why so you use for, Apple. Yeah, that's, that <laughs> is why I use I use them both, but it, it does make me scared, though. I'm scared to turn on the Microsoft machine when they push updates. Uh, so researchers looked, look Looped. to boost crowdsourced brainstorming online module design to a company study. I really think this is an awesome idea and would be a really fun way to probably produce some maybe like low level products um, and get a lot of people involved maybe in their own community. Uh, but anyway, Nick, you want to take a couple? Where are we? We are oh, right here. Amazon bringing us opt in. There we are. Yes, I see it. I was kind of hoping you'd do the entire page and then we could just switch. Um, well, I could do that. Okay, okay you got a couple it. more here. All right. So Amazon is bringing us some opt-in notifications to Alexa. Now, Nick, could you elaborate on what that is? Yeah, so before there were no notifications, and now I've opt-in to receive notifications when my packages arrive, and it's a little yellow ring around the edge, and it's nice. Oh, that is nice. Yeah, I like Props to Amazon this year with those updates to Alexa. She's just come a long way. She's even come on our show a few times. Yeah, a couple times. Oh, I should have had her on the show for this. Oh, well. Aha. All right, another awesome project by Lowe's. I love this so much. And this is exoskeletons help workers carry stuff that they normally couldn't. Yeah. Just, again, exoskeletons and in the right place. Uh, (laughs) Fidget toys just aren't hype. Or aren't just hype. And this this is one of those that I think when we talked about on the show, it was like a study saying that this really could improve ADHD using these fidget spinners and stuff like that, or fidget toys in general. Right. More than a lot of people in Silicon Valley were using stuff like that. And I, I don't know if I believe the hype. I don't either. Yeah, no, yeah. no. Nah. Ah, oh, here we go. Oh, gosh, I'd love to see this in my car. So three ways Ford cars could monitor your health which I thought was always like a really cool way of just integ- again into that in- internet of things world that we're kind of diving into from your car to your house to your Fitbit or whatever on your arm, tracking you all the time. All, all right, time. so in 2015, whoa, 2015 traffic safety fact sheets. So, oh, yeah, this was really intense. So rural and urban comparison comparison of traffic fatalities. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I don't really remember the gist of this, but if I was taking a guess, either. Um, yeah, don't take a guess. Really I don't. Sure. I don't remember either. Yeah, we. All I right. just know that we covered it. <laughs> yep, it was in the so list. Distracted. Yeah. Uh, oh, and now we're in distracted drive in 2015. Well, we know that that was an increase because in 2017 we definitely had a problem with distracted driving, uh, even in autonomous vehicles. All right, so wearable devices communicate vital brain activity information. Again, with the wearables and yeah. just looking into giving you a little bit more insight into what's going on with your body. I think it's just awesomeness. Yeah, wearables seem to take a center stage this year as well. There seem to be a lot of progression with not just the different types of wearable technology, like the smart bra and the shoulders that help you flirt and the... But also the application, right? So the application of being able to detect whether or not you are having an abnormal blood flow or something. You know, there's a lot going on with that. So many cool inventions and such a great use of the tech. Okay, I'll take the next couple here. So we had a robot cop patrolling the the streets of Dubai. We went over some graphic design trends for 2017. Uh, looked at some connected and auto- automated vehicles from the transportation agency. Looked at uh, Gatwick Airport launches indoor navigation system to help passengers find their way. Nick, I so wish I had flown to Gatwick so that I could see this. Oh, but man. I did not. You you should fly to Gatwick just because. Yeah, just for funsies. Just for funsies. Uh, three innovations in the safety industry happening right now. Oh, that's clickbaity. That is very clickbaity. <laughs> fitness trackers accurately measure heart rate we talked about that and but not calories burned so there is that so yeah we went over the that's kind of problematic at the moment but i feel right. like we'll see improvements in 2018 I, I think so is that part of your prediction no it's not <laughs> but it's just a fun thing to say change at work linked to employee stress duh almost one-third of u.s workers cynical about organizational change changes management motives all that yep. stuff 
I, I believe it. I believe it too. This app uses artificial intelligence to turn design mockups into source code. This is probably up there in the top five. So I have three top fives right now. The boy that called Siri for police. The, uh, oh, remind me. I don't remember what the other one was. Anyway, and this one. Uh, and those those are up there for sure because this one is basically using, you basically put in an image of your mockup and it turns it into HTML that you then can deliver to developers. And you don't have any back and forth. You just say, here it is. And they have all the hooks for the buttons and whatnot to just plug it in. It's, it, it was such a cool concept. Yeah, and there's a couple of those. Actually, one's come out of Airbnb recently that's yes. really awesome. So it's spawned a lot of technology around this idea. Was it Airbnb or was it Adobe Air? Uh, Airbnb's got one going on right oh. now. Even though they um, pledged not to use AI, huh? Yes, pledged not to use AI to take out human jobs. Oh, or to, that's right. Well, get out there uh, hu- or take over having human hosts, right? Oh, okay. All right. That's fair, I guess. Where are we? Oh, Goldilocks level of teen screen use. We looked at, you know, how, <laughs> what's the appropriate level of interaction for teens? Uh, FDA assembling a team to oversee the AI revolution in health. That Ooh, kinda, that I kinda, wonder where that's at. I haven't heard anything else out of that the, I, for the rest of the year. I haven't either, and that kind of plays into my prediction. So we'll, we can talk about it then. Nice. Uh, this site estimates how likely you are to lose your job to robots. This is how a self-driving... We looked at how self-driving cars see the road. And we looked at how I live my whole life without... How have I lived my whole life without an extra pair of robot arms? So this was kind of an uh, additional set of robot arms that you could strap to yourself. <laughs> I just remember that being the goofiest looking thing to do. It, well, it looked really goofy, but I mean, still. Uh, we looked at robotic exosuits and turn you into a super athlete. Google Sheets using machine learning to help you visualize your data, which was really cool. Uh, the fact sheet for speeding from the traffic sp- safety. Oh, let's see where are we. Director of Typing by Brain Project discusses how Facebook will get inside your head, so a follow-up to that earlier article. Uh, your car tires could soon know when roads are wet and slippery before you do. Advancement in technology there. In-person requests are more effective than electronic ones is a study that came out. Yep, that's a really useful tip for all of us that are living in such a digital world. Yeah, no kidding. A study came out where they looked at virtual reality simulation could and reducing the fear of death. Um, and what the well, let's see, was this a study that makes uh, that looked at what makes movement feel strenuous and kind of the energy expenditure ergonomics? Now that's that's kind of interesting in the application to maybe VR and how we can make people feel like they're expending more energy. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, or or less, right? Keep you in VR longer. That's true, too. Uh, where are we? Facebook's new maps will help responders during national natural disasters. Is this the year that we saw the introduction of the uh, check-in? Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Well, like, it, I thought this that was kind of like this story, right? Uh, no, not quite. The check-in's been around for a while. Um, this is using that data from check-in to see where people are safe at to say... Oh, okay, gotcha, yeah. To well, say, oh, I'm yeah. not completely sure. Uh, senators reveal plans for national self-driving car legislation. So there was a follow-up to that. Oh, yeah, there definitely was. You're right. RE2 making bomb-diffusing robots as intuitive contro- to control as your own hands. Let's see here. A tiny sensor turns any stationary bike into a VR workout machine. I still want one of those. I do too. That would be so fun to do because you could just do like awesome trails or something and not be bored. Talking colonoscopy robots and other weird biomedical me- tech from IEEE's biggest robotics conference. Honestly, I want to go to one of these IEEE conferences because I mean, I they are to. just the weirdest, but the most awesome set of technologies ever. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, switching gears, they there's a Navy destroyer that collided with a container ship. Talking about human error in that assessment. The presence of your smartphone reduces brain power. Oh, surprise, surprise. YouTube's VR180 solves the problem of VR by chopping it in half. Um, <laughs> which, I mean, directionality in VR is very important. Uh, I believe we talked about that on the show, but it's always important to re- return to that concept. Facebook may finally have to compromise its user experience in order to keep growing. I don't remember what that one was about. 
Yeah, that one was about like them having to introduce a lot of ads to keep like growing the business and making sure that publishers were making enough money. Ah. Which is funny enough, there's a follow up to that today that Google is still like taking money from basically how Facebook would earn a lot of cash or a lot of revenue through their like publishing system. Sure. Uh, so it's definitely it's definitely the case. Not working yet. Uh, let's see here. We have uh, Facebook's internet beaming drone completed its second longest test flight and landed perfectly. So, Blake, this marks the halfway mark through the year. And I know we're like in the middle of the second episode, but it's OK because we like I said, we piled a lot more stories in the beginning of the year than in the end. So let's keep going here. Who's responsible if a brain controlled robot drops a baby? And we talked about neuroethics. We talked about stopping distracted driving, uh, starting out figuring how people really drive, L'Oreal using VR uh, to make design decisions, Photo Bucket's ransom demand is a masterclass on how not to treat your users. That was a good one. Oh, that was so bad on their part. They got so much hell for that. Oh, yeah. Ohio's the fifth U.S. state to permit delivery robots, which we saw just two weeks ago. Just been ripped out from San Francisco, but I bet yeah. you, I wonder if the populace is different. Yeah, who knows? Um, in terms of like the cities, and maybe that's why it works better in Ohio. Or maybe Ohio's ripped it out too. We haven't heard yet. Stay tuned. Maybe. Stay tuned. Yeah. Well, yeah. This is, we are recording two weeks in advance. So that could be a new story that happens following on suit of, uh, of San Francisco's example. We had that third thumb, which was cool. Because it was like it, it was on the opposite side of where your thumb actually is, and it helped you grab additional things. And then uh, the brilliant yeah, staircase. Combine that. Oh, sorry. Oh no, it's okay. It's okay. Were you looking for it right now? <laughs> no, I was just saying combine that with the extra set of arms, and you're just oh, good yeah. to go. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the brilliant staircase design that helped store extra energy to make it easier to climb, and it was basically like a spring-loaded stair. Thank goodness. That's, that's felt like something out of like an Acme cartoon or something. Yeah. All right, Blake, you take the next page. Oh, yeah. Okay, so Google Glass made its reintroduction into the world, but this time in a different context. I think it was much more an industrial context, kind of like how we saw the HoloLens. All right, so in a fragmented VR market, one company wants to unite them all. Now, if only I knew the name of that company, that would be awesome. But nonetheless... VR is still moving along. So this shape display robot follows your hand and simulates the surface where you're touching in VR. I thought this was a really cool application because, again, you're really getting that you know, immersive feel. You can see yeah. your own body parts, see how they're interacting. Uh, so Dungeons & Dragons, new app will make role-playing easier than ever. So, uh, thank you, Thank you to the DMs from Dungeons and Dragons and Wizards of the Coast. Hey, that was so, a duplicate. So we, well, we actually reported on the, the fact that it will come out, and then we reported that it came out. I guess it's not a duplicate; it's just a status update. Yeah, it's an update. All you D and D heads out there, I've got it on my phone. I use it all the time. Uh, so low cost, pliable materials transfer transform glove into sign to text machine oh yeah. again a lot of this kind of using the technology that we have available us to help us make uh texting easier yeah oh well i think that was asl wasn't it yeah this is this is definitely a little bit of a yeah. different application yeah uh, from sign language to text but still still pretty cool Ah, uh, yes. It seems like every time I get a turn, I get some Elon Musk stories, which we all know are my favorite. Maybe we so he shared us some footage of the Boring Company's first working car elevator. Now, Nick, wasn't this like a prototype? Um, it was an elevator. It that... was it. Did it? Was it real though? Yeah, it was real. It was. Completely I thought it was real. just a video no, no, no. of it. So, oh, maybe this is the. Maybe this is the video. I know we saw the video as the concept and then we actually saw the working elevator where we were like, "Ah, it looks a little too tight for the yeah. car." Yeah. It's it's not going to fit anything but a Tesla in there. All right. So Disney once again, so they're building facial recognition to figure out when you're laughing during Toy Story 5. That's kind of interesting. Uh, but scary at the same time. Yeah, uh, so Disney power. plans to make augmented reality a shared experience. Th I think they were putting some of this like in the parks and stuff like that, or that's what the yeah. goal was. Yeah, it's kind of like a mirror where you can see yourself alongside a cartoon. Kind of reminds me of that uh, Haunted Mansion ride where uh, at the very end the ghosts are in your cart. Oh, yeah, that's right. Super fun. All right, so Take Me On app turns your home into an 80s music video. 
Uh, all I have to do is turn the radio on, and that's easy enough done. But thank you, Take Me On app. So House lawmakers just took the next step towards allowing more self-driving cars on the U.S. roads. Thank a lot of progress. Goodness. A lot of progress for for self-driving car legislation this year. Yeah, a lot of progress, but it, okay, this is very localized and kind of a nonsense statement, but I'm going to make it anyway. I really haven't seen a whole lot more of self-driving cars anywhere on the actual road. That you know I, of. To, yeah, that I know of, but I used to see like Google cars or whatever stuff labeled, uh, but maybe they're just doing it very incognito. Potentially. Uh, or maybe it's just uh, like that Ford store that we'll talk about later. But anyway... So the $15 magnet hack turns a smart gun into a regular gun. Oh, gosh. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's That was a sketchy one. Uh, so DARPA wants to build a BS detector for science. DARPA, you got, I'm going to apply for a job at DARPA because they just want to make science better and create crazy things. I yes, love it. Yes, they do. Um, okay. So the all controller controls all your consoles. Oh, I was so excited for this because I hate swapping consoles back and forth but oh, I don't yeah. remember if the all controller was what I hoped it would be but anyway still a cool idea uh, Hyperloop's one passenger pod takes its first ride uh, That again we, we live in the Jetsons land uh, Facebook engineers panic and pull the plug on an AI bot after it starts developing its own language oh that was fun yep Elon Musk might be right mm, I don't know so what will it be like to have a robot co-workers? This I'm kind of interested in. I would like to know what it's going to be like to have robot co-workers. We already Especially, have them. Yeah, I guess we do. We already have them. <laughs> That's my answer yeah. to that. We already have them. All right, so how your phone number will become the only username that matters? Uh, I'm going to say that that's not true. I think that we're going to get past the phone here in the next few years. But anyway, so Blizzard and DeepMind turned StarCraft II into an AI research lab. Again, an awesome application of video games into research. So cool. Love it. Uh, Startup Neurable unveils the first brain-controlled VR game. Oh, yeah, that's and right. I forgot I've got about an that eye one. on these guys because that this is some fun stuff. I forgot about that one. Yeah, I think, honestly, I think I get Neurable and Neuralink confused in my head sometimes, but I definitely want to Neura. see more from them in 2018. Yeah. Uh, okay, so VR robots could help teleport juries to crime scenes. Uh, this this was an op- awesome application of VR, like really oh, letting yeah. people see what was going on in a crime scene and kind of expect it from themselves, draw their own conclusions. And hold on, before you move on to the next one, keep this one in mind because I am going to have a prediction for next year that could very well tie very well into this. I said very well twice. I don't care. It's late on a Tuesday night. Whatever. It's going to double <laughs> very well tie into the very well things. It will. It's going to be so good. I can't wait for you guys to hear my prediction because it's going to be cool. All right, next. <laughs> <laughs> next. All right, so robots to replace Disney actors. I don't know, man. I like the Disney actors. They're nice. Uh <laughs> Amazon's Alexa can now steer exoskeletons. Oh, hold the phone. I don't I, remember this story. I feel at like all. I feel Do you like, a show without me, Nick. No, I feel like we're slowly like watching the singularity happen before our eyes as we go through these new stories. <laughs> Honestly, we're slowly watching Alexa come out of the machine and uh, grab a body. Yeah, That's pretty much what I'm seeing body. here. Yeah. All right. So Apple, Facebook, Google, and other tech giants tell the Supreme Court to protect cell phone data in a key upcoming case oh man i can see that as a definite fight for them uh, we've seen that we've seen a lot of that from apple this year haven't we yeah yeah oh man so ford patents removal wheel and pedals for future autonomous cars i thought this was like a goofy little concept um but makes some sort of sense if you're going to try and just hang out in the front seat by yourself well yeah i mean not if, drive if the autonomous system goes down you want some way to control the vehicle sure Most definitely. Ah, yes. Self-driving wheelchairs debut in hospitals and airports. I still want to see one of these in an airport, and I think Gatwick is is one of the places mentioned in here. Go to Um, Gatwick. Oh. Your boy. Yep. The infamous Instagram pic that I saw of Elon Musk showing off SpaceX's custom spacesuit. Haven't seen him in action, but still pretty cool. Amazon's new education tool helps students become better writers. Ah, gosh. You know, I love Amazon. I love them for so many reasons, but this is one of my favorites. Educating people, making them better writers through for software sure. is so cool. I agree. Uh, 
Why blockchain needs design. Oh, yes, it's coming. And I'm telling you, that's going to be big in 2018 and from here on out, in my opinion. Uh, so robot caregivers are saving the elderly from lives of loneliness. Oh. oh. <laughs> the dog bot. The, the yeah, tail, the tail Roomba. I that Pero, the seal from Masters of None, for anybody who watched that <laughs> oh, show, yes, was real. Yes, yes, I completely forgot about that. I had no idea. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, so Alex and Cortana are on speaking terms. Man, so I this is in my top five favorites because I really like the idea that companies are collaborating to push yes. these technologies along. I Yeah, I agree. I don't know if it's in my top five, but it's definitely a good sign that we're willing to... Actually, this plays into one of my predictions too. Good. Good. It's all happening. Nice. Oh, yeah, this was an awesome story. So going to the doctor is a pain. Can Silicon Valley help? So this is kind of like not just personalized healthcare, but also making the process more personalized for you. Yes. Um, uh, really great idea. Aha, stop trying to kill the headphone jack. Everybody's freaking out about the headphone jack being ripped out of things, uh, which is warranted if you like the headphone jack. So like game it. developers totally explain some of their favorite ways to trick the player. These were interesting. And now uh, you definitely see them come out a lot. Yes. And now that I look back on this, it's very controversial because I'm going to take this in the light of the Battlefront 2 controversy with all the loot boxes. Right. So. I again this is we're recording this two weeks in advance so anything could happen at this point but the predatory design behind loot boxes and being able to say like oh this person bought a loot box and didn't get what they want so they bought another one and being able to tap into that data and say these these are the types of people who are more likely to buy them and then tweaking the behind the scenes odds of getting something like that uh, this this is tricking the player into getting the company more money because they're susceptible and vulnerable because they have a gambling problem. Like it's, it's very predatory and it's worth a conversation, but not right now. Cause we're still got a lot of stories to cover, but it's, it's interesting to look at that in the light of tricking or, or, or implementing these predatory designs. I like it. Yeah. It's very much like the bridging the line between tricking and manipulating people based on their behaviors. It's a, it's right. a fine line to walk. All right, so the, U uh, the U.S. House of Representatives passed new bipartisan self-driving car bill. This was, Yay. I don't know, this was a big deal for me because we've we've had such a, a hard year politically with people being very split up, and this was just something that uh, we saw two parties agree on something, and it's it's propelling the future of autonomous vehicles forward. Yeah, Super awesome. This is one story that we saw from like start to finish this year that just had a happy ending. It did, yeah. Uh, but this next story did not have a happy ending for some no. people. So Equifax data leak could involve 143 million consumers. And this was actually not just the U.S. localized. This was across the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a big deal. Cybersecurity. Absolutely. Yeah. Cybersecurity. We got to get on that. So a simple design flaw makes it astoundingly easy to hack Siri and Alexa. Now... I'm, I just want to say this before I move on. This simple design flaw was a little more involved than you would think, but it was like basically saying words or like saying keyword phrases for Siri or Alexa at tones that humans can't hear, but the the software right. can still pick up. Yeah, uh, Still hilarious and kind of scary at the same time. So hackers have already started to weaponize artificial intelligence. Oh, man, again, with cybersecurity and what people will do with technology that you put in people's hands, is it's tough to figure out rules and how to abide. But anyway, so the lack of safeguards in Tesla's autopilot contributed to a fatal crash. This is kind of following up a little more on the implement the implementation of autonomous vehicles and what it really means for uh, people behind the wheel. Ah, yes. I was I thought this was an awesome implication of autonomous vehicles. So Audi wanting to use autonomous cars to run air, errands for you while you're still at work. Oh man, we are getting into the territory where we are starting to hear stuff that just came up recently. So I think we got a page and a half. We don't have to read like 2 weeks ago. Ah, we can just go over it. Anyway. Uh but let's see here. So US Transportation Secretary Elaine Cho uh, introduced a new set of voluntary guidance for self-driving cars. Again, with that progression, Ford disguised a man as a car seat for research in self-driving -car cars. That's uh, in my top five. 
just well, the funniest of 2017. Yeah, we had uh, we had the iOS full of design inconsistencies. Amazon working on Alexa enabled smart glasses, which we still haven't heard anything from. We had, uh, let's see, the first hints of how Facebook plans to read your thoughts. That's kind of a duplicate, although I think this one was just clarifying a little bit more. Valve thinking charts will negate Steam review bombing. That was an interesting conversation to have. Oh, yeah. What was that that surrounding? I don't remember. Oh, that God. It was like, it was some some game that had been recently put out. Or no, it was just in general, like people hate bombing developers well, it was in response to a game developer coming out about some political thing i think uh, autonomous flying taxis take to dubai skies in field test ah yes yes so there's there's the prediction there's there it the is prediction oh i missed one uh brain control game helps kids with adhd improve mental focus uh, big five, five biggest announcements from today's Amazon hardware event. That's where we found out about the Echo buttons, the doorbell thing, the, uh, the, uh, oh, what is the other, the, the video one. That's where we found out about all those. We also had uh, fighting Clara with a smartphone using modular robots to turn legs into arms on demand. Oh, here's your boy, Elon Musk. Rocket travel plan is definitely possible. Definitely bananas. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my favorite stories to read, man, because you just had like all these really great and big ideas and then scientists being like, not nah. possible. <laughs> we had Intel introducing Internet of Things provisioning solution basically to help facilitate installing devices automatically. Uh, we looked at chatbots coming to the HoloLens and how they'll help workers make better decisions. We took a look at everything that Google announced uh, earlier this year with like the... Um, Oh, what are the Google Buds, whatever those are, the all the other t- those were the ones that stood out to me. Yeah, the bilingual buds. Yeah, although I yeah. hear those aren't that great. Uh what 80s sci-fi movies can teach us about bad UI where we looked at things like Star Wars, yeah. And then <laughs> looking at smart bandages. This is the second time smart bandages came up in our uh review. Uh, where they releases meds on command for better healing, which I thought was really interesting. And we have again these wearables that are that are coming into focus. Those health, those life saving health wearables. Yeah, no kidding. A Fitbit for the stomach again with the wearables. Hearing implants that let you connect your iPhone to your nervous system. Oculus Go. They, these again, we don't have to talk too much about these because these are all within recent memory. Uh, Oculus Go is VR's biggest milestone and its greatest compromise. California DMV tweaking rules to completely to allow completely driverless cars. Um, and people like government nudges. Oh man, we had a lot of interesting debate back and forth in our Slack about yeah, this. That was a cool conversation. That was a good conversation. Uh, let's see, Adobe using AI to amplify human creativity and intelligence. A selfish brain wins out when competing with muscle power. Visual and cognitive demands of using in-vehicle infotainment systems. Uh, biggest study of co- police body com- body cams yet finds no change in use of force or citizen complaints, which also ties into my uh, predictions. We have air traffic controllers may get a break from nonstop drone reports. LA looking to use rideshare to build the future of public transit. Yeah, these are all pretty recent. Amazon Key opens your door from indoor... Oh, I guess it wasn't announced at that thing. This is something separate. So Amazon Key is the doorbell one. We have the UK government investigating hotel booking sites for high-pressure tactics, unfair pricing, which looking through that microtransaction lens, like the whole high-pressure tactics thing. Um, The HoloLens is now a certified protective eyewear. Logitech is experimenting with a keyboard built for VR. Ford is making a trucker hat that might save drivers lives. These are all really recent. I'm I'm loving that we are approaching the end of 2017 and just kind of looking at how these all in the context of everything that we talked about this year are kind of fitting in. Uh, we got French regulators approving human trial of a bionic eye. Robots with AI become racist and sexist. Big surprise. But scientists think they found a way to change their minds. HTC's VR arts program brings exhibits into your home. Uh, Ford assembly line workers try out exoskeleton tech to boost performance from IEEE. 
Do you want to take it home, Blake? Let's take it home, my oh, man. Right. All right, we so got a few AI more startup embodied intelligence wants robots to learn from humans in VR. This was a really cool story. Please check that out because that's in recent memory. Uh, oh, here we go with Facebook being a little bit malicious. So its former president admits it's exploiting vulnerabilities in human psychology. If you didn't know that, now you do. So letting robots kill humans without supervision could save lives. Oh, nope, that's a little wrong. Letting robots kill without human t- supervision could save lives. Uh, big ethical questions with robots, as oh, usual. Yes. So the Apple Watch can accurately detect hypertension and sleep apnea. Again, we've talked about these recently, but still awesome to see. Absolutely. So HEC cancels plans to release wireless VR headset with Google in the U.S. Oh, man, how Oculus is just taking over the U.S. market. Uh, so a new study finds that nationwide failure nationwide failure of body police cameras to predict, predict civil rights. And like Nick said, he has a little bit of a prediction around this. Am I right? A little bit. All righty. So the FDA just approved a pill with sensors in it for the first time ever. That still blows my mind. That along with like the stomach Fitbit version. These are all uh, still pretty new, so I'm not surprised that still blows your mind. Yeah, I know. Very fresh. But uh, you can virtually inhabit Toyota's new humanoid robot. Awesome. So MIT and Harvard create cheap artificial muscles with super strength. I'll leave it to MIT. Haptic X reveals its haptic glove for VR. Yeah. Google's new tech can spot and shame people for peeping at your phone. Yeah, watch out for the vomit of uh, or the rainbow vomit on your phone. So, all right. So, Amazon is putting Alexa in the office. Oh, that'll be interesting. Maybe you're right, Nick. She's already in the office. Uh, California DMV ditches rule to limit liability for self driving car manufacturers. Spacesuit take me home feature could save lost astronauts. Really? That's really quick. Going back to that California DMV. So, they, they implemented instructions or guidelines, right? They, they, uh, yeah. Tweak rules to completely allow a driverless car. I'm just trying to get the theme here. So we had, uh, basically, they said, okay, yeah, fully autonomous vehicles, go ahead. And then they come back and say, well, y- you guys have to be at fault for that if anything goes wrong. So they kind of opened it way up, and then they kind of came back down on it, I, I think, at least. That's that's the story I'm getting. Yeah, and I th- but I think it all makes sense, too, because, I mean... It- legislators are not going to know nearly as Absolutely. much at the outset of all of this, right? Yeah. And you kind of learn as you go. I mean, this is brand new technology being integrated at such like a big scale, potentially, that it, I think it kind of makes sense. I think everybody's playing fairly to some degree. I agree. All right. So you mentioned the spacesuit. Take me home. We got five more. Go. All right. So Sony begins its 14-day in-home PSVR trial that Blake did not get to be a part of. Wow. So San Francisco just pulled the brakes on delivery robots. Wow. Thank goodness that Three. video is nuts. Ransomware shut down the whole North Carolina County. Wow. Uh, Two. Hashtag cybersecurity is a problem. Uh, let's see here. Your boy. Elon Musk basically confirms AI is coming to eradicate the human race. What? Watch out for my predictions. One. And a wearable chip will help to predict seizures, we hope. Holy moly, that is a lot of news stories. Man, can you can, do you want to take a guess at how many news stories we had this week? Or not this week, this year. <laughs> this week would uh, be a we lot. We had I think I think the number comes out to 782. Uh that's close. I think we're up in the 500s. Oh, so we don't even have an accurate count. All no. right. No, no, no. Yeah, I have no idea. I I can count them, but because of the way we catalog the first couple of the year. Uh, oh, we, it's we, no big deal. Yeah. I, I am curious, though. All right. So before we end out this year, 2017, I want to get us into the prediction mode for 2018 so that way we can look back on this and laugh next year. So let's just go back and forth. Looks like you got three predictions here. I do. I got three biggies. Okay, so why don't I go, then you go, then I go, then you go, then I go? Because Beautiful. I have I have five here, and you have three. So let's just tackle them. <clears throat> I, that, that means I have a higher likelihood of getting more points next year. So un- unless you can think of anything kind of off the fly, you know. Oh, <laughs> don't worry. I got some off the fly ones okay. based off what we just <laughs> All right. So my first one here is that major lead. So, the okay, really quick. I'm laying out the ground rules so that everybody knows where we're coming from. We're kind of going with the 
overall prediction, and then we're going to try to be as specific as possible because some of ours, like you noticed, were kind of nebulous, right? We kind of rated them either 0.5s or whatever, and this is very either yes or no. And so just to give you an example, so I predict that in 2018 we'll see major legislation to be passed to outline regulations for human brain interfaces. Uh, and with this, I think that some of the major highlights from this legislation will be it will only, uh, or there is no active stimulation. The, the, the um, device can't stimulate anything in your brain. It can only detect signals from your brain. That's just to start with. I like where your head's at. That makes a lot of sense to me. All right. Well, why don't you go ahead and give your first prediction there? All right. Here we go. So I'm thinking that we're going to see an omni-channel of a user experience. So what I mean is there will be a shift from fo- from our like focus on mobile technologies to more voice user interfaces, as well as VR engagement within a person's surrounding environment. Big part of my prediction is that Facebook is going to launch a major platform that will make social interactions more interactive through both both voice and VR and connected devices. Now, I think this is going to be a major push. I don't I could be wrong about Facebook launching it. But as we've seen throughout last year, they pushed innovation in a lot of different ways, especially also in their social kind of platform environment. So I think that. With the, all the scientists that are working at Facebook and some of their Skunk Works facilities, too, we're going to see a lot more in voice and VR. Yeah. All right. So my second prediction here is virtual reality as a service. So kind of linking back to that PlayStation VR trials, I think that we'll start to see sort of a monthly subscription service to attend VR events. So these are uh, either 3D experiences that you can go and just kind of go to, but I... I foresee it kind of like movie pass or Netflix where you just subscribe and you can go to any number of these experiences. Cause I start to, I think they'll start to pop up here more. Ooh, I like that. So that means that you and I can have similar experiences. If I get a PSVR, maybe we could or even not. join them together or not. Yeah. I mean like, I'm just saying like they're, they're like the star Wars thing that I'm going to in like a couple weeks here. Uh, I'm, I would just pay a fee and or, or pay a monthly subscription and I could just attend it whenever I want to. Ooh, that's going to be awesome, man. Yeah, that's that's my that's my prediction. All right, what do you got next? All right, so I've got a big one about cryptocurrency. Oh boy. So the va- <laughs> I don't know. This could be really off the wall. Blake, the world can totally change. Blake, we are recording 2 weeks in advance. So if cryptocurrency has gone to hell in that time, your prediction is going to sound totally funny. Yeah, I know. It'll be great. Okay, so the value and utility of cryptocurrency will replace traditional marketplace cash transactions. We'll be end up paying for things like groceries or have at least have the option to pay for groceries with cryptocurrency. That's interesting because Steam just pulled cryptocurrency as a way to pay because it was too volatile. So it'll be interesting. If it stabilizes, I can totally see this happening, though. Well, that's that's the thing, man, is everybody's really freaked out all of a sudden about it, like, being so volatile. Like, like big time on Wall Street right now is just like, you better watch out what you're doing. But with all these kinds of technologies, it has to grow. And I think we're only going to see more advancements and more people putting effort into it over 2018, mainly because we've seen Bitcoin be so successful. Uh, but who knows? Maybe I'm completely wrong, and uh, I'll be slapped in the face for that one next year. All right. So my next prediction here, we will see the introduction of yet another add-on for the criminal justice system. Okay, that's my prediction, right? My specific prediction is that we'll see the drone cam, right? This gets a 360 aerial, or or I guess 180 degree, but it gets a the the context aerial view of confrontations to put police officers in context right because with body cams you're only getting half of the perspective with this it could show you this this whole environment what's going on and then here's the best part which links into one of our stories you put jurors uh in there and they can actually see this thing in VR yeah honestly nick that'd be a great addition i think we have the drones to do it I the only question I have is I mean we've seen in even with body cams sometimes they don't show it to juries because they don't want to bias them uh, so who knows maybe it'll work maybe we'll see this more often in the courtroom yeah who knows all right your last one here 
Oh, my last one. All right. This is all about Neuralink and Elon Musk. So we Your will boy. see the first fully functioning Neuralace prototype in 2018. That's my kind of like larger idea, right? Which is feasible. It's a startup. So, and there will be an added feature to Neuralace uh, with a new type of software encryption to prevent cyber attacks of the mind from AI or otherwise, that's including a, just humans. That's a good one. I like that one. Yeah. I, I just think that with. You, you know, Elon Musk's kind of thoughts towards AI is very dangerous. And plus, the, the world we're in right now, we're seeing so many cybersecurity problems. If this stuff's really going to work, we're going to have to figure out how to protect ourselves. So I, I think this one couples really well with what you said about the HBIs and legislation in that regard. So yeah. we'll see. You know what? Speaking about your boy, I'm going to get here into my fifth prediction. I, I know I only said four. Or I've only said three so far, but I'm going to jump here. So Elon Musk and Tesla will purchase another WTF company and present plans for an out there idea, right? This year he came with Neuralink. He came with Boring Company. Next year, I'm calling it now, Elon Musk is getting into nanorobotics to mask our senses for virtual experiences. So he's basically going to have you ingest through a pill form or something nanorobotics that attach to the synapses in your body that make you feel like you're doing something else. I totally agree with that, and I'm super (laughs) excited to see what he comes up with throughout the year. Blake, do you have an on-the-fly prediction? On-the-fly prediction... Yeah, I do. All right. All right. So this this is a dark and stormy one, but this is kind of where I'm thinking. I think that the next big cybersecurity attack, and just so everybody knows, I have no no idea of how to even Inside try one of these things. So <laughs> quote me here. But I think the next the bit the next big cybersecurity attack is actually going to happen where it's a data leak from Facebook oh because boy. that I think they collect such intense amounts of information that as as time goes forward unless they're really on top of things which they they may very well be I think that's a a giant target for people that are looking to harvest other data about social interactions or what people do on Facebook or things that they like stuff you could basically use to manipulate them right yeah. Okay. Uh, my last prediction here is that we will see an app of apps type service for major streaming services. Uh, so an app of apps type service is my overall uh, prediction. But then the specific one is um, for major streaming services that integrates Hulu, Netflix, HBO, Showtime, CBS. And that will sort of start this domino effect where other types of services will follow uh, to where we start integrating all our apps to be ubiquitous. Ooh, that's a cool one, and I like the idea of that. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. So those are our 2018 predictions. We will be back, I guess, soon. We'll be back soon. (laughs) If you guys find any stories over these next couple weeks, let us know. You can hit us up in our social media channels or on our Slack. The uh, link is in the show notes. You can also head on over to the Human Factors Cast LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, at H Factors Podcast. Like I said, hit us up on those social channels. Check out our SoundCloud. Leave us a comment over there. We love hearing from you guys. So you can also send us an email over at humanfactorscast at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 901 646 1432. That's 901 646 1 HFC. Let us know what you think of our predictions and uh, let us know if you think we're crazy or not. And if you're really saucy, leave us your predictions. We want to know what you guys think for 2018. If it's good enough, we'll read it on the show. If it's not, like, completely out there. I mean, even if it is completely out there, I don't know. Anyway, be sure to support us on our Patreon because we love your money. And if you don't want to give us your money, that's okay. (laughs) Be sure to like, subscribe, review us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Store, whatever your favorite podcast directory is. That always helps us get the, the word out there that Human Factors Cast is a podcast that you should listen to. And we need your help. So do it. And, of course, you can always reach us at our home on the web, humanfactorscast.com. Mr. Blake Arnsdorf, it has been a long night breaking down all the news stories from 2017. And I'm so excited to be here and uh, be able to talk about it all next year with you. Where can our listeners go and find you if they want to tell you how wrong you are about all of your 2018 predictions? Yes, Nick. Okay, listeners, please jump in our Slack and let us know your 2018 predictions and how wrong I might be about sundry things. Uh, And if you're looking to get 
get in contact with me outside of Slack, you can also hit me up on Twitter at Don't Panic UX. I just want to take a little time to wish you all a happy holiday and wonderful new year. And thank you for an awesome 2017 of Human Factors cast. And thank you to our wonderful host, Mr. Nick Rome, for just being a great guy to work with and somebody to spend my Monday nights with. Oh, you're too kind, Blake. As for me, like he said, I've been your host, Nick Rome. You can find me on LinkedIn or Twitter at Nick underscore Rome. Thanks again, guys, for tuning into Human Factors Cast in 2017. It means a lot to us. Happy holidays. Have a wonderful holiday. Spend some time with your family. And remember, until next time, it, it depends. depends. See you in 2018. That's the last in 2017, Nick. We're done. Benito. Fade the thing out. Fade it out. Do it. We're done. Slowly fade it out. Just do it. We're done. <laughs>